One of the features I love in Power BI is the ability to click on an item in one chart and have the other charts cross filter and highlight that selected item. Now, unfortunately, there's no built in way to do this in Excel, but I'm going to show you a way we can achieve a very similar effect with a little Excel magic. Now, I'll be using Power Pivot charts for this. However, if you don't have a version of Excel with Power Pivot, you'll find an alternate way using formulas included in the file that you can download from the link in the video description. OK, let's get started. Now, before we look at the steps for building these charts, let's just understand the three main components. First, we have here a slicer and that provides our interactivity. Now, if I drag the slicer to the left, you'll see it's just been cleverly aligned over the vertical axis for my brand chart. And then I have a pivot chart for the product categories. So with some clever alignment and formatting, we have something that appears as though it's one object and it allows our users to interact with it. Now I've only used two charts and linked them to this one slicer, but you could link a whole dashboard to it. All right, let's look at the steps for building the charts. Now I've got a new workbook here where I've got my data ready to go. It's an extract of the Contoso sample data from Microsoft. It's got gross profit by product category and brand and date. I've also got a table here for the brands, which is just a distinct list of them. If we look at the table design tab, you can see this table is called brands and this one is called data. And that's important. We need them formatted in a table to load them into Power Pivot. So we'll go to the Power Pivot tab and load them in. Now I need to just click this add to data model button. If you have earlier versions of Excel, it might say add linked table. So I'll click add to data model. We'll go back to Excel and we'll add in the brand table. Now the next thing I need to do is create an inactive relationship between these two tables. So on the design tab, we're going to create relationship. We'll select the data table as the primary table and the brand table as the secondary table. I want this relationship to be inactive, so we're going to deselect that and click OK. OK, so I'm done with Power Pivot. Let's close the window and we're ready to write the measures. Now, a measure is the equivalent of a calculated field in regular pivot tables. We can see the measures here. We've got total gross profit and selected brand. The selected brand measure only returns the gross profit for the selected brand in the slicer. So let's go ahead and create those. I'm going to go measures, new measure. The first one is going to be called total gross profit. And it simply sums the gross profit. So we'll set that to a number format. We'll do some more number formatting shortly. So click OK. And then one more measure for the selected brand. This one uses the calculate function. So we're going to use that measure total gross profit that we just wrote. But here we want to reactivate that inactive relationship. So we're going to use use relationship to activate the relationship between the brand column in the brands table and the brand column in the data table. Close use relationship and close calculate. We'll set it to number category and I'll click OK. So we've got our data loaded and our measures written. We're ready to build the pivot tables. So on the insert tab of the ribbon, pivot table, here I want to use this workbook's data model, that's Power Pivot, and put it on a new worksheet and click OK. All right, let me drag the field list out so that we have more room. So the first pivot table is going to just show my gross profit by brand. Now I have a brand field in the brands table and in the data table. So it's important here that I use the brand field from the data table and I want the total gross profit and the selected brand. Let's apply some formatting. So I'm going to go into the value field settings and number format. Here I want to create a custom number format. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit and pick a format that's already close to what I want and then just modify it. So I'm going to round it to million. So I want two commas and then M to be clear on the rounding. And again for the negative format and I'll click OK and OK again. Let's do the same for the selected brand measure. Now this custom format is going to be at the end of the list. So just scroll to the end and click OK. All right, so that's our brand pivot table. Let's copy and paste that because we've got the formatting already applied. And instead of by brand, this one's by product category. 
Next, we just need to insert the slicer. So in this case, the slicer is for brands, but instead of the brand field from the data table, I want to use the brand field from the brands table and add a slicer. And we get this warning that we may need a relationship set up. That's because the relationship is inactive. I'm going to just ignore that because I want it to be inactive. Now when I click on a brand in the slicer, you can see the gross profit, the total gross profit doesn't change, but the selected brand measure recognizes the relationship between the tables and filters accordingly. Now you notice that it's filtered this pivot table, but not this one. So we need to assign the report connections to both pivot tables. I'll click OK, and now they're both recognizing the slicer. So we're ready to insert our pivot charts, one for each pivot table. So I'm just going to close the field list and we'll go to the Analyze tab and Pivot Chart. Here I want a bar chart. This gives me more room for my long labels. And let's do the same for this one. Again, a bar chart. All right, I'll just move them so they're not sitting on top of each other. Let's get rid of all the fill buttons. They just take up way too much space. Just right click and deselect them. I'm going to control one to open the formatting pane. So this one, I want the series to overlap by 100%. So this is my selected brand. I want it to sit on top of the total gross profit columns. And this one's going to be 30% gap width, to just make our bars a little bolder. Now I want to sort these in alphabetical order so I can change the order of the categories and put them in reverse order, but then I have to fiddle about with this horizontal axis as well. So it's easier just to sort these by Z to A, and then that feeds through to the chart. And this one here, I actually want to sort it based on the values. So I'm going to sort it smallest to largest, and then we have our largest values first. So we're going to have to give these charts a bit more room so we can read all the labels. Okay, let's concentrate on this one for now. I don't need the legend here. I'm just going to have one legend for both charts. Now I want to remove the border on the chart outline. So go no outline and let's format this in a different color. So what I want to do is have this as the dark blue and then the total gross profit for all of the brands in this lighter shade of blue. All right, we'll make this a bit bigger. Actually, what we'll do is we'll find out what the size of this one is. So it's 12.52 high. Let's apply the same to this one. So we'll make it 12.52. Then we can align them with them both selected, align to the top. All right. So to save some time, I want to copy the formatting in this chart and apply it to this one. So I'm going to control C to copy and then select this chart and paste. So now our charts are formatted the same. Let's minimize this so we've got more room. I'm going to move this over here and this one alongside. And we want our slicer to sit on top. So let's go up to the slicer settings and we'll bring this to the front. We also need to hide the header. So we don't want to display the header. And I need to make the slicer closer to the size of the chart. So what we need to do is give the chart more room for the slicer. We'll make that narrower, bring this across and sit it on top. Now I need to make the buttons bigger. So let's just increase the height until they're aligned. So let's give it a bit more space until it fits in. Okay, so it's almost aligned to the chart. We might need to make it a bit bigger actually. I don't want to spend too much time messing about with the slicer because I think you get the idea. Make that 1.025. All right, nearly there. Now the slicer has a border on it, so we want to remove that border. Unfortunately, there's no easy way to do that, but on the slicer tab, we can create our own custom slicer style. So I'm going to right click the style it currently is formatted in, duplicate it, and then we'll modify it. So this one will be called no border. The other thing I want to do is make sure the buttons in the slicer match the color of the column that's selected. So we want to format the whole slicer with no border. And then I want to format the buttons for the selected item with 
data so that the fill is this darker blue. And we'll make the font white because it will be harder to read when it's a black font with the dark blue. So I'll click OK. Now all I need to do is apply that format to my slicer and it appears as one with the chart. Now I'd like to add some data labels to my chart. So I only want to add the labels for the selected brand. So I'm going to select that first and then choose data label and do the same for this one here. Okay, now it'd be nicer to format those data labels in a font that matches the color of the bars. And let's do the same for this one. Now at the moment, this chart is sitting behind this one. So what I want to do is make the fill for this chart transparent, so no fill. And we'll get rid of the grid lines on the sheet so it looks neater. The problem we have now is we can see the pivot table behind. So let's move them to their new sheet. So we'll Control X to cut, Control V to paste, and we'll hide the grid lines there. Okay. So our charts are coming together. I need to make this one a bit smaller so that it's not showing so much behind. Okay, we're nearly there. All we need is a header because if I put a chart title for one of the charts, it's going to mess with all of the alignment. So I prefer just to insert a shape. I'll just draw it on and we'll call it Total Gross Profit by Brand and Category. Let's format the font a little bit and we'll make it a bit bigger and we'll center it. And let's format this so that there's no fill and no outline. And we best make the font a dark blue. Okay, so there's our charts. One last thing we need is a legend. So let's just add a legend temporarily here. I want the legend side by side, so we'll give it some more space. I'll delete the grid lines in the background. I'm going to take a screenshot of the legend and then I'm going to paste it in up here. So now that I've got my screenshot, let's remove the legend and we'll put the grid lines back. So we'll paste in the legend and position it at the top. So there we have our cross highlighting and filtering, just like we have in Power BI. The only difference is here we need to use the slicer buttons rather than clicking on the columns in the bar chart itself. I think you'll agree it's pretty close to what we get in Power BI. Now remember, if you don't have Power Pivot, please take a moment to download the workbook. The link's available in the video description. Here you can find an example with regular pivot tables. The only difference here is we need a couple of formulas to perform the selected brand calculation, but otherwise it works in exactly the same way. And you can see the charts down here. If I click on the slicer, it works in the same way. The only difference is we're using regular charts in this example, not pivot charts. I hope you can make use of this technique. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find this technique useful. Thanks for watching.